What is up, everyone? I am International Passport. I'm here again for yet another classic live stream. I know it's going to be a classic, even though we just, we're 30 seconds in because we have the legendary Theo WAF in the building. Uh, before I go any further in this live stream, I want to say, brothers, um, thank you for your support over the years. Um, shout out to my old subscribers and shout out to my new subscribers for joining a powerful passport movement where I encourage brothers to get their passports, wealth, riches, stocks, crypto, and live a better life with your beautiful foreign woman. So in this live stream, um, we have a very special guest here called Theo. Some of you have probably seen Theo in my previous live streams. <laughs> and I thought I'd bring Theo back to drop another classic intel regarding Brazil. Uh, but before I tell Theo to introduce himself for the new people, brothers, get the likes up. And of course, feel free to support this channel through super chats and comments. Theo WAF, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. I had a long day. It was pretty good. Um, enjoyed myself. A lot of work. Still have work to do. I'm going to be working up late tonight. I um, was working out in my gym today. My my trainer is Brazilian, of all things. So um, <laughs> I was actually talking to her about the stream today, uh, about what, what I should say. And um we have you know very i was confirming with her various um points that are concerned to black men she was she's totally down with that so she was listening to me um we talk about this all the time she heavily wants me to go to brazil and get remarried there um so i had yeah that's what i did had good food good nutrition didn't eat too many carbs so i'm pretty good right now awesome bro theo can you please introduce yourself tell us who you are what you do and tell brothers how important you are in this passport space. Uh, I would say Theo is a very important person because Theo <laughs> has dropped CIA level, government level <laughs> intel on Japan. So I thought I got to bring it back here again. So Theo, let us know who you are, why okay. you travel in general, and so on, brother. Oh, there, there! Finally got my camera. The guys not be smudgy. Sorry about that. So, um. I, I traveled very much around the world when I was younger. And then when I went to university, I traveled. And then um, I just, during that time, I said, there's no way that I'm ever going to date an American woman or marry her. And it just, it's just impossible. So I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm out of the country. I'm gone. And that's what happened. I, I left. I went to Japan. I stayed there for uh, 12 and a half years as an adult. I was one year Russia, one year uh, France. I also traveled when I was a child. Um, I've been to over 40 countries. I speak four languages. And um, most of the time, I've just been dating abroad. Uh, I dated a little bit in the United States when I came back in 2010. It was one of the worst experiences that I had in my life. All of my worst dates that I have had and have been with American women in the United States um, refuse to do it again. So I'm very big on passport. I have a very huge salary. I travel. So if I'm going to go date, I just literally, there's, I'm here in Austin, Texas. I just go to the airport. I go to literally go to another country. That's for, that's how I date. Um, I refuse to date domestic. This is literally <laughs> impossible. No. <laughs> Theo, me and Theo think alike. The the saying is "Great minds think alike." Again, here uh, it's impossible here to stay in the UK because the women here they're too loose. Uh, they have uh, issues, and I'm sick of it. You know. Plus, they're very masculine. Uh, I've got two super chats. Um, shout out to Femi. Uh, Ak Akin uh, Akin Ku Owo uh, for the five dollar super chat. Thank you very much for your super chat, Femi. Much appreciated. He says, appreciate all your doing. IP new subscriber here. Center Center FB group request too. Thank you very much, bro. I look into that, bro. Um, another super chat from King James, uh, two dollars. Uh, thank you, super, uh, thank you, King James for your super chat. Much appreciated, bro. He says, Theo, WAF legend and IP legend, let's go. Yes, both legends. Thank you, King James. Much appreciated. Uh, King James is a second GOAT. Jordan is a GOAT in basketball. Let's get that right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> shout, <laughs> shout, shout out to Anthony Thomas for the $25 super chat. Let's get it in, IP. Yes, bro, let's get it in. Thank you, Thomas, for the super chat. Much appreciated, bro. Um, shout out to Thomas Demihim for the £1.79 super chat. Uh, big IP and Theo. Another classic, Brazil is here. Let's go. Thank you, Theo, for your super chat. Much appreciated. Let's get back to it, bro. So, Theo, okay. 
first question to you is um, how are brothers treated there in Brazil and are the mm. women in Brazil checking for brothers? Speak on that, Theo. This is one country where they're definitely checking for brothers by far more than any other um, mm. race. Uh, and they're they're definitely happy to be, particularly with African American men. Uh, this is one thing that I I overwhelmingly saw when I was there. I felt very much at home, and the women are very traditional, and they're at least somewhat educated. You you get variations. It matters how far you go go in in certain areas, um, but they're they're wonderful. Um, they're very lively. They're very much checking for brothers. That I mean. Yeah, it's it's almost like a, an unfair advantage to be black there. Whoa, um, that. Yeah, you you need to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll go into that. But it's you, they're definitely looking at you first. You you can feel it. Um, the women are very respectful. They're more much more traditional. You're not really going to find the feminists there. I mean, there are a few, but they're they're not really. It's, they're they're traditional women. Mm. Okay, mm. thanks for that for you so far. Um, got two more super chats. Shout out to Conrad Grant for the two dollar super chat. He says, Theo WAF International Passport. Big ups to you. Uh, big ups to you too, Conrad Grant. Again, uh, thank you for the super chat, bro. A regular supporter, much appreciated, brother. Uh, shout out to JM for the two dollar super chat. <laughs> I, I definitely want a, <laughs> a Japanese Brazilian. Trust me, bro. I'm, I, bro, I'm, I want to get there, bro. You know, I'm trying mm -hmm. to. Mar mar marinate the meat first before we start eating the, the main course. I, I, I know brothers love them Japanese women, so it's coming, bro. It's coming, bro. But again, shout mm. out to brother Super Chat. So, Theo, um, I like what I heard so far. You're saying that brothers are being checked on heavily, and you mm. said specifically American brothers. Mm. What about UK brothers, you know, in Brazil? Because I, I, I get the feeling that in South America, they don't really show UK brothers love, particularly in Brazil. Would my accent be a, a factor in me not getting women or getting women feel? Well, you would be you'd be just fine. Just there weren't a lot of you guys there. Hmm. I mean, I, I would rarely I wasn't even seeing that many like white Brit Brits there. Um I didn't what I saw was um Spanish, Portuguese, Americans, Canadians, Japanese, uh Aussies. Um, some Chinese there. Yeah, definitely saw that kind of crowd. Of course, the rest of Latin America were there as well. Didn't see that many British. Um, I don't know why, but you would do very well there. Fantastic, Phil. This is great to hear mm -hmm. so far. Um, so, Phil, can we break down um, the demographics of women that check for brothers the most? So, I know Brazil is very multicultural, but mm -hmm. Brother, I want to know out of black women, white women, Asian women, um, pardo, mixed race women, who checks for brothers the most out of all those groups of women? I mean, I, I in Brazil, it was all, I mean, I would say out of all the women that I've met internationally, I would say, like, Brazilians and Colombians were the ones who are looking for brothers the most. Is, is that, that white white Brazilian? Even, yeah, they were looking. I mean, they, there's a thing there with um, the women wanting to be, like, lighter. They have, like, colorism a little bit. But it's not that bad. Not like like places in Asia where, they, where that's a kind of an issue. Um, they, Some of them, I mean... Uh, the ones that were meeting were much more confident in who they were, and they just mm -hmm. wanted. I mean, if they saw a black guy who was really strong, um, confident in who he was, and he was happened to be American, as long as not a jerk, they were make, making themselves more than available to be approached, and they have a way of communicating to you that they're definitely interested in you. Mm -hmm. Like if you can read her body language, it's like, oh yeah that's going to happen right there like that's another one that's another one so you need to be able to read body language because they they definitely give signs okay bro so summarizing this point here black brazilian woman white brazilian woman asian brazilian woman and a mixed mm. race brazilian woman they're all checking for brothers heavy in mm. brazil mm. yeah i i never really felt that they were like there was one other group that really just wanted to date like white guys God, they were always given a look. 
like everywhere I went, they just gave a look. If as long as you're confident, that's the big thing. They, the women can read you, and so if they see a confident man, um, and he's black, oh yeah, they're really going for it. It wasn't the same like for confident white guys. I mean, they, they were, there was still some attraction there, sure, but I, I didn't. The black guys were just gone. They're they're all inundated. I mean, they had like multiple plate spinning all the time in brazil it was like too easy damn uh shout out to thomas demihan for the one pound 79 super chat he says big up ip and feel brazil has all flavors of women yes indeed bro mm -hmm. uh, very much cultural society uh shout out to, uh, to jay bones for the two dollar super chat my bro just got back from sao paulo he said heaven uh thank you bro for the super chat jay bones much appreciated brother so feel my next question is um Break down um, the best cities for brothers to go to in Brazil to get beautiful dying women that are checking for them. I know that Brazil has many cities. It's a big country. But mm. list a few cities that actually are good for brothers to go to. Well, I was in Rio. And, I mean, of course, I was there for Carnival. And it was, it, was, it was fun. I mean, there's a lot of, like, craziness going on. But all the gringos, I mean, gringos, the, the foreigners, right? <laughs> you got... You got a lot of them there. You got a, they're they're doing kind of stupid stuff with the and they're, they're acting like idiots with the the locals. So the locals are kind of treating them like like undisciplined children in a way. That's how that was my view. They they get down. There's partying. There's hookups going on, but you're really not going to be able to make an intimate connection. Um, I I highly recommend so as my trainer so there's a lot of other people I've been talking to I highly recommend Sao Paulo. Mm. It's and I was there for two weeks and I like I liked it. I was actually a wingman when I was there, Damn. so uh, I was helping another guy um, find chicks. But the problem was with him was that he didn't have the confidence. So what happened was I was trying to um, get the women like I you know how wingmen work so he likes this target i would go for the other women in the group the, the attention towards me and then he'd get his option get a shot towards the target right um what usually ended up happening was that his target wanted to talk to me so it was kind of frustrating um because i i had the confidence i didn't give a damn whereas he was um always wondering you know whether or not he was saying things right uh he just wasn't looking the women in the eye and, and just being direct where I was very direct and very much looking the women in the eye, engaging them, making jokes, things like that. And so he wasn't as popular. I was actually more popular than him. Awesome, bro. Great intel so far, Theo. Um, shout out to Uncommy Goodbar for the 10 Canadian dollar super chat. Mm -hmm. IP, put it in the work. Appreciate it. Shout out, Theo. Thank you very much for the super chat, Uncommy Goodbar. Much appreciated. Um, Shout out to Kingu Ghidorah for the $5 super chat. I'm heading south of the border next year. Great intel, brothers. Yes, indeed. Thank you for the super chat again, Kingu Ghidorah. Much appreciated. This is great intel so far, Theo. And mm -hmm. um, so Rio and Sao Paulo are two cities that brothers should definitely go to in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, I would say mm -hmm. in particular, Sao Paulo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you really want to go because that has the the world's second largest population of Japanese people as well. Mm. And so it's it's the educated like city area where it has like a multicultural like vibe to it. And um, there's a lot of well-to-do people and there's there's women there who are not only checking for brothers, but they're, mm. they're more or less willing to go get married. Um, mm. There's other places where you can go uh, and really it's more on the, inside the, the interior of the country, but it's kind of touch and go. I mean, so the, the girl might be with you, but she might have been with 20 other brothers this, this year as well. You're just another guy. Um, whereas in Sao Paulo, you, you, have, you have a much more of an ability to negotiate or to talk with a woman, to have a relationship with her that would lead towards marriage. Ooh. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, shout out to Michael Conte for the $5 super chat. He says, support IP with likes, comments, and super chats. Whoa. Thank you, bro, Michael. Uh, again, mm -hmm. a great comment, bro. Again, brother, support the channel through those means. That'd be much appreciated. Again, thanks, Michael, for the super mm -hmm. chat. 
Theo, this is great so far. And mm -hmm. I'm happy you mentioned Japanese Brazilian women. So Theo, I have not been to Brazil and mm -hmm. many brothers in my live stream have not been to Brazil. You know that brothers on my channel, they love Japanese women, okay? Mm -hmm. We know in Brazil, there's a lot of Japanese women there. Theo, based on what you know, based on what you've seen, are the Japanese women in Brazil checking heavy for brothers from America and brothers from the UK? Speak on that, Theo. Even, are they also checking for brothers that are Brazilian black as well? But speak on that, Theo. Yeah, they want someone who is um, successful, but not like, not overly successful. I mean, mm. they, they want someone who's like down to earth. Um, so Brazil is one area where, one country where you don't need to be leading with your wallet. You don't need to be leading with like, with how much money you have. You need to be just be like down to earth mm. and just like be fun, um, show your personality, show that you're having a good time. And that communicates much better with the women. So for example, like in Sao Paulo, um, let's say they're talking to a, a Japanese woman. So like, like say she's 75% Brazilian, 25% Japanese. Hmm. And I'll tell you, they're hot, man. They're, <laughs> yeah. I know, so, I know. <laughs> so um, if you're talking to one of them, you're just sitting back and kind of chilling out. You shouldn't be like trying to get into her pants, but just trying to make a connection with her. Okay. And the thing is, is that she'll tag along. Now, she probably has a job. So she's probably like, hey, you know, I've got to go to work at, from like nine to five, like normal, right? But then after, I'm available and she'll say something like that to you. She'll make it obvious that she is able to, she, she is available for dating, for further communication. So you really don't have to pursue that much. I mean, it's, if she likes you, she'll make it obvious that she definitely wants to talk to you. Um, so you want laughter, you want to go with the flow. Uh, this is one thing too, I wanted you guys to figure out. So like, if I'm going to like, again, Japan, Czech, Ukraine, one of those main areas i'm bringing like five or six suits with me high level shoes like i'm gonna go classy i'm gonna i'm gonna use something really good like italian french materials um in brazil you only need one suit at most uh that's in case you go to like a really classy italian restaurant and so you want to have that just in case or like you might need to have like one pair of khakis but my recommendation was, I was just actually look, watching this today. Uh, if you watch Nelly's video, It's Just a Dream, he's on a beach <laughs> and he's like wearing like, like a white shirt and kind of relaxed clothes. That's how you want to look in Brazil. A lot of time. That's really my, my real opinion about that. You really want to look like, like, like you can just be on the beach relaxing. You you're having a nice you, your shirt is open, you're just you're drinking a margarita or some beer or something like that, and you're just real, you're just kind of going with the flow. That's that's how the Brazilian women will, will start talking to you. Fantastic intel, um, Theo. Shout out to Jay Bones for the two dollar super chat. I for legendary and Theo W A F legendary. Thank you, bro. Yes, Theo is definitely a legend in this space. Thank mm -hmm. you for the super chat again, Jay Bones. Much appreciated. Um, shout out to Thomas Demihin for the one pound seventy nine super chat. Japanese Brazilian woman equal God's gift to brothers. <laughs> yes, indeed, Phil. But yes, indeed, Thomas. Thank you again mm -hmm. for the super chat, um, Thomas. Phil, this is great intel so far. Um, hmm. So we, we've established that you know um, Japanese women are checking for brothers, but mm -hmm. brothers need to be humble, down to earth, make sure you dress well. So mm -hmm. can we speak about? The black brazilian woman in brazil because brazil is a very black country over 50 percent mm -hmm. is black so mm -hmm. there's a lot of black women there um mm. name feel break down the difference between um a black brazilian woman and a black american woman who's who's better who's more feminine who's more who's more wifeable speak on that feel you have the intel bro um so black brazilian woman is a woman um, she talks with you, she's feminine, she engages with you. Um, you would, I mean, if you, especially if you like black women, like I, I have, this is one of the ways you can tell that race isn't an issue because I would more 
I would very gladly marry a black Brazilian. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're, they're amazing. Their smell is great. Um, they have wonderful hair. Um, I mean, it's all there. The booty is amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm talking that is that is some booty, and uh, they they have they have a a vibe. They have have a way of talking to you. They, they're, they're direct, but you can see this inner beauty, this inner femininity coming out, and it's 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 a delightful. I remember being on the beach with one, and we just sitting there talking for hours. And, you know, I was just ordering drinks and we were sitting there. We A lot of seafood. Seafood's really great in Brazil, particularly San, well, a lot of areas. Um, so, I mean, I would just sit there um, in a cafe or a beach. So the beach that's close to um, Sao Paulo is called Santos. And so I was there, like, and, you know, I just order food and sit there and talk and giggle and make jokes and then go out and walk and play volleyball with her and her girlfriends. That's the way it was. It was just a fun time. Damn. And you, you're mm -hmm. saying that um, Black American women are that, you know, everything that you want in a woman, especially in a Black woman, you find that in Brazil and not in America. Theo, why, why are Black Brazilian women so different to the Black women in America? Speak on that, Theo. What, what, what have you seen that's made them so feminine, so... I mean, so so beautiful, so so smelly, nice, and all that stuff, bro. I think it's. Mm, uh, I don't. They, they. It's a cultural thing. I would say, it's something that they they really embrace their culture and who they are and, and their femininity, and they don't have a problem. Like a lot of them, they they weren't into finessing. They weren't into money. They were like, they were on the family. That was their focus, and they they understood that they needed a man. So, you know, if they had money, I mean, if they didn't have money, but they can get a man, they really thought of that as being um, a, a real advantage in life. And they again, their cultural um, the accent was very great. Um, it's very hard for me to call the the, the ABW a, a, a woman. Uh, it's <laughs> It's it, it it really is like to me. It's pretty much illogical. Like lizard or robot, <laughs> that would be much better. Yeah, I could say that. Um, like they're they're just they're weird creatures. You know, one of the things I would do is like you just put the ABW and put her into another country and see how she fares. Yeah. And she she fares very poorly. Whereas you could put a black Brazilian woman into another country and people are going to be looking at her. Yeah. Like. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah, we know, like, you know, maybe I can't date you, or like, I can't, there, maybe there's an issue, but, woo, look at you, you know, mm -hmm. that's, she, it's, she's definitely feminine, the, she's going to control the room, whereas ABW, man, they're like, yeah, we, we, we bye, uh, we're just, <laughs> running our, like, man, nah, nah, man, um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, this is a perfect example, you know, people are saying that brothers aren't dating ABWs anymore. No, it's not about race. It's not about brothers not liking dark skinned mm. women. It's about femininity. Mm -hmm. If brothers can get femininity in a different country, they will date her. I'm telling you, a lot of brothers still want black women, but mm -hmm. if you're not feminine, you're going to find other options. Shout out to Sean CK for the super chat. Uh, $5. Thank you, Sean CK. He says, what is the best city to, what is the best city to go to first if you've never been to Brazil? Speak on that for you. Sao Paulo. Mm. That's really my my point of view. I I look at um, um, like Rio as being rather touristy. I mean, you can go there. I mean, it's set up for you, um, but you're not going to be able to really get a, a personal um, feeling or, or attachment to a woman there. Whereas if you go to um, San Paulo and then you take a, a bus or a taxi, it's not that much money. Uh, you go to Santos and you go there like see there's a there's huge beach, beach resorts there and you just you're, you're there for the entire time um you're gonna be able to have a, a personal conversation with someone like we're, we're talking like 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 a, like a beach fire 10 o'clock at night with a, with a bottle of champagne you're just sitting there talking you know you're gonna, be, you're gonna have that experience so go there go to sao paulo fantastic for that Theo. so Theo, um thanks for the intel so far 
Um, so when brothers are in Sao Paulo uh, and and Rio, what are the best places to meet? So what are the best what are the best places in both cities to meet Brazilian women? Is it the beach? Is it certain clubs? Is it certain? Is it the cinema? Speak on that feel. How did you meet um, gorgeous Brazilian women? What this is something. Are? This is something I actually talked to my trainer with this, and I, I was trying to get more information updated. So I was in Jardim, Jardim, which is garden. Um, I was in Jardin there, and that was a very nice area. It's very upscale, and it has um, good hotels, good good restaurants, great food. So, um, basically, that was that was one place that was kind of like Japan, where I could just do street game. Like there was a woman just walking down the street, I would just go up to her and talk to her. Um, I wouldn't have there. there there's no like. Like I can't believe you talked to me. Ah, like I'm I'm too good for you. It, it would be more like she just kind of giggle, and she would be waiting for you to talk with her more. So you kind of want to look at her finger to see there's a ring because you don't want to mess with someone else's woman. But mm. if there's no ring there, and then she's giggling, you want to you want to go with that. Um, there's other ones. My 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 trainer just we were just talking about that. So, ita itaim. Um, I've never, I don't know if I've been there. I might, I, you know, I'm always traveling. Um, Mor, Moru, Morumbi, Morumbi. She said, she's recommending the, that as well. She told those three areas, that's where I should be going next time uh, when I go there. I remember Jardin. I liked it. I thought it was, it was very upscale. I felt very at much at home. That's kind of place that I like to be in. Fantastic, Theo. Theo, could you type those names in the live stream comments, please? Because um, brothers sure. don't understand uh, what those are. Um, shout out to A Twins for the one ninety nine dollar super chat. Uh, thank you very much, brother. He says, dark skin Brazilian. God damn, where's she at? Yeah, bro, in Brazil. You know, you got dark skin feminine woman in Brazil. Black woman straight from the source. No, I don't need no man, no feminist nonsense. Straight womanly feminine. Thank you again for the super chat, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Theo, next question for you is, um, is prostitution a problem in Sao Paulo and Rio? And speak the truth, Theo, you know, what you've seen, what you've heard, is it a problem, prostitution? I wouldn't say it, I would say it's there. I wouldn't say it's a, pro it's a problem. Um, I mean, there were guys who were using prostitutes, that's for sure. I mean, I was aware of that. Um, why you would need to use one, I don't know. I mean, you you could do it. You you just need street game. That I mean, you you barely even need street game. You just need confidence. I just advised a guy down there. I was, I was telling him what to do, um, what areas he was going towards. And this guy has very poor game. And um, he's like twenty nine. He was he was with a a twenty year old within three days. Damn. Yeah, it's it really is that easy. Um, if it, it, but if you have confidence, if you have some game, um, it you the the scale of amazing woman that you can go for is is much dra more drastically improved. Um, so one of the things like, again, I was alluding to before, for clothing, you want to bring a minimal amount of clothes and then mm -hmm. go to a store there and buy clothes. Okay. Like you want to buy Brazil, good quality Brazilian clothes there, but they're going to be really cheap and get something for the beef, get something that's laid back and you don't have to go really that expensive. You don't have to flaunt it. All you have to do is have the really good personality um, and confidence. That's, that's the big thing. Um, you're going to want to go to like the restaurants. there are amazing. Uh, the food there is superb. It's, way way better than we have in our own countries it they have a lot of fusion so for example i would have like japanese and brazilian food together um it, it was almost impossible to stop eating the amount of the price was very low so you could take a woman out and say like hey i want to go to like a, a fusion place i want to go like japanese no well, italian brazilian place and have seafood and um you could probably for like Forty dollars have one of the best meals there in, in the city. Like as, as long as you're not, you know, like street food is good. Um, 
like trailer, like not trailer, um, like a kiosk area. There's mm-hmm. places where they like kind of like go to the side and they just have like food and you sit down in the street and actually eat it. That stuff was great. And it's really, it's a great place to have um date, you know, just have a prompt-to date right then and there. And if you're paying for the woman, she's going to be happy, you know, mm. she doesn't have to use her money, but it's not that expensive. It's, you can, you can definitely wing it. Fantastic. Great intel, bro. Uh, brothers, get the likes up. We got over a hundred people watching, but only seventy-eight likes. Can we please get the likes up, brothers? Please, if you're if you've not liked this video, get the likes up, please. That'd be much appreciated. Um, Fiona, next question for you is feminism. You know, feminism is becoming a problem worldwide, and if, I even know it's even spreading to Brazil. I'm seeing protests of horrible-looking women. Uh, making up nonsense that we need feminism. Is feminism a problem right now in in Brazil, Theo, or will it be a problem in the future? Speak on that, Theo. No, they're very family-oriented. They value men. They are okay. not into feminism. I mean, they like to work, but they want to have kids. The thing about Brazilians is that they have a very strong culture. So their culture is stronger um than your culture or my culture so they're they're gonna like in terms of culture they're gonna want to convert you to their culture not them going to yours and part of it is uh they want a traditional family structure they really want that family time and they value children so you know if if you got her pregnant she's gonna be happy she's like wow and if you stay with her she's gonna be thrilled that's how they are Fantastic intel, Theo. Um, Theo, would you consider a Brazilian woman to be, on average, very good looking, you know, compared to women you've seen abroad in other their, countries? Their inner beauty is very attractive. Mm. It, it's very hard. Like, it, they're almost on Filipina level. Uh, describe, or Thai this, level. Describe, in, describe inner beauty in your sense, uh, Theo. So, inner beauty is... An, um, uh, a woman who embraces her feminine side and mm. from her personality, she radiates it out. And you can tell that she's feminine, that she's communicative, she's nurturing, and that she has um, a good level of confidence in herself and her femininity, regardless of how she looks. Mm. That's a first level that comes out. And mm. then after that is her body. So like, Let's say this: she might have the booty, but her eyes are gonna what are, are really what's gonna captivate you. You're gonna what's gonna look at those eyes and like, wow, I see a beautiful woman inside of, inside of you. Your soul is amazing. That's what you're really gonna get a lot of times with these women. Fantastic, brother. This is why I love hearing. Ooh, okay, um, Theo. How about we speak about languages, right? Mm-hmm. Brazil, they predominantly speak Portuguese, so. Is English enough to speak to Japanese women, or do we need to know Portuguese? Speak on that for you. Okay, this is where you start getting into some problems because um, the the more Portuguese you know, the more able you are to get with, like, I would say, like, the cream of the crop women. And you're going to need to know Portuguese. Now, I'm fluent in French, and sometimes what would happen is that the women would speak in Spanish, Mm. but they didn't know English. So they would speak in Spanish and I can, my French is good enough that I can, if you get fluent Spanish towards me, I can understand how to speak in French. And that was one of the ways we would communicate. And a lot of the Portuguese I can read because I would just translate it into French. Mm. Um, Not that far away, but if you, I mean, if you're really serious about this, like I'm kind of getting serious now about Brazil, um, you need to learn Portuguese. I actually brought some of my books over that I'm I'm using now to study. So I'll I'll give this to you guys. So the first one that I would really recommend, this is one I've I've used for years, this series Mm -hmm. is Living Japanese, sorry, Living Language. And this is Brazilian Portuguese. This this series is actually very good. Um, So also if you want to learn Russian or Ukrainian, this series is actually fantastic. I also recommend it for French, not for Japanese. No, no, I don't recommend okay. for Japanese. No, okay. um, this is uh, another one. You know, teach yourself complete uh, Japanese Portuguese. This is actually a very good uh, series. 
the teach yourself. I use this also for, for French um, back in the day, back in the 90s. Um, this is, now this is a hardcore one. If you're really serious, like I'm usually serious in language study, if I really want to go into pursuit mode, like I'm going to, I'm going to go there, I'm going to go after a really high level woman. This is the book series that I use. And this is mm. uh, modern Brazilian uh, Portuguese grammar. Uh, this is from Rutledge and Rutledge. Um, it's a little expensive, but uh, it's, it's much more academic. But if you study this book and then this is the workbook that goes along with it, if you go with this, uh, you'll be able uh, to do some decent level conversations where you can actually start talking theory or drama with a woman and she'll start taking you seriously. Um, I used that Rutlib series with French and Russian. I, I never use it with Japanese. Like, Japanese has a totally different system. Um, Baron, you need to have this one. Baron's 501 Portuguese verbs. These again, these are just basics. Like you really, this stuff, this is this is really good stuff to learn, to use. Um, and then let's go to another one. So uh, always a good conversation book. So conversation, uh, conversational Portuguese dialogues. Um, this is really good. Like when you're about to go there and you want to make sure that you can actually speak something Mm -hmm. In case you you got too got you're too bookish, this is something you need to study. And then also, uh, this is very good. Uh, Two thousand most common Portuguese words in context. I've used this kind of language book, this language series. This is lingual lingo mastery. I've used these kind of books for um, Russian French. Um, again, if I'm if I'm going to go hardcore with this, I'm going to use it again with with Portuguese. Um, these the reason why you need to have this kind of um, book is again to get you to actually start speaking to know what kind of words you should be saying in your like your active vocabulary um so yeah i don't play around when i go if i'm going to go into pursuit mode with it mm. with a woman yeah i i this is the kind of books i'm studying like two hours a day every single day for six months before i get on the airplane okay um, bro so uh, um oh carry on bro sorry carry on no go ahead go ahead good you say so uh, what what is your work process like? Um, so, what's your process like in memorizing languages? Because those books there, that's a lot of pages there, bro. That's a mm -hmm. lot of words to remember. So, how do you actually memorize those words? What's your process on that for you? Okay, so uh, I have a master's degree in linguistics, and one of the things I I learned actually from learning languages, and then why confirmed in grad school was that you always lose your you forget your vocabulary three times. So you actually need to just accept this. So what I do basically is this is this is going to be really hardcore. This I the best implementation of this process uh, that I ever had was with Japanese. So what you need to do is like say 30 words. You write out the 30 words 100 times. And that's a Monday. By Wednesday you have forgotten those 30 words. Mm. So you write them 100 times again. And then Friday, you've forgotten them again. That's fine. You write them a hundred times again. And then by the next week, by Sunday, maybe you start remembering them. Mm. And then you're like, okay, I maybe I've got something. So then what you're trying to do is write it and then think, how would I communicate? How would I use these words? how would I actually communicate this idea that I have using this vocabulary? And you're just trying to, you're, you're, you're playing around with it and trying to figure it out. How do I communicate? And this is why like this, these kind of books, these are useful for just thinking about how you would actually communicate what you're actually studying. Now, the other one that you do is this is, this is really hardcore if you want to know it. So, okay, this one, living language, I've used the Living Language uh, series before. They have CDs. Back when I was a student, I was cassettes. <laughs> so <laughs> what you do is, <laughs> I'm just serious. Uh, okay, that's, I'm just sound as honest. So what you do is um, you get your, you get right now you get like an MP3. You get, it comes with a CD or a DPD. You put it on your computer, you put it on your like iPad or you know your, your whatever you're listening to. And then one hour a day, you just listen to pure Portuguese. Mm. 
Mm. And what I did before was I would listen to pure French and Russian, Ukrainian and Japanese at least an hour a day, if not four hours a day. So I would be exercising same time every day. I just listen, listen to it. And what that does is prepare your brain to actually accept a new language. And you just keep on listening to it passively. You don't have to actually understand what they're saying. Just listen to it. Then if you do that for an hour and then you like get one of these academic books and you're actually doing the lessons and you're studying the vocabulary, you're more likely to actually learn the language. It's, it's, it's going to start going inside your brain. Your brain will actually pick it up and keep it. And then you have to actually have that process of writing the vocabulary words a hundred times again, in, basically three or four times, like 100 times and then 100 times and 100 times, 100 times. You do something like that, yeah, your brain's actually start picking it up. Well, wow, that's, that's a lot of work there, Theo. Wow, incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Conrad Grant for the $5 super chat. Uh, Theo WAF, thanks for sharing this amazing, this amazing intel. If I go to Brazil, I may not come back to the USA. Yes, bro. Thanks again for the super chat, Conrad Grant. Much appreciated, brother. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to uh, Volcanus for the $5 super chat. Thank you very much for that, brother. He says, uh, I can't read that, but okay. Oi, tudo, bem, fala, comigo. All right, thanks for that, but I'm not sure what that means, bro. <laughs> if you can write the translation for us, Volcanus, that would be great. But again, <laughs> thanks for the super chat, bro. Um, shout out to uh, Ransom McKissick, the Australian brother, uh, for the um, $2 super chat. Much appreciated, uh, Ransom. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, shout out to okay, sorry, sorry, brothers, sorry, brothers. I just missed one super chat there. Shout out to Escalante Landi for the ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Escalante. Much appreciated, <laughs> brother. Theo, um, moving away from Brazil very quickly, can you please uh, recommend some Japanese books or materials that you're using that you used before, um, in the past? Do you have any? Any books with me right now, very quickly? Um, yeah, someone was just asking me about this. So I was doing a consult. Um, which ones do I have? What are my good ones? I actually have some at my desk, of all things. Where's... Um, okay, so well, I'll go ahead. Uh, where's, my, where's my super one? Oh, uh, man, I can't believe what well, just disappeared. Okay, so, okay, so, all right. This is one of, oh, there it is. This is one. Okay, this is good. So my, one of my favorite books for learning Japanese was a dictionary, a dictionary of intermediate Japanese grammar. And there's um, a dictionary of beginning uh, uh, Japanese grammar and a, a one for advanced Japanese grammar as well. I have all three. The intermediary, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it really gets you up to a high level uh, just uh, very quickly. When I was married to a Japanese woman, we actually went through the advanced one together. We made all kinds of jokes together about it. <laughs> thought it was really funny. Um, so there, there are some points that were really true that I needed to know. And there's some points she's like, nah, nobody ever says that. Man. Who, who ever cares about that? So uh, that was actually very useful. Um, this one, this is the Power Japanese series. And this one how to sound intelligent in Japanese. This was one of my best go-to books that I used before I went to Japan and then in Japan, my first two years. Mm. I used this book hardcore and I bought another one in, in America. Um, I'm so good waiting to get my storage. When I get my storage out, I can, you could, if you would see the book I have from the nineties, it is totally like used. You would know I read that book. Um, and then, yeah, okay, this is a good one. Um, all about particles. This book is amazing. This will get you, this will explain a lot of parts about Japanese grammar that are driving you up the wall. This will help you out quite a bit. Um, high recommend. And then next one, uh, jazz up your, uh, I can never say that. Onomatopo. Onomatopo. Yeah, I can't say this word. I don't know. <laughs> um, this one, so in Japanese, they use this quite a lot. And mm. I never could understand all of them, but they're, they're all over the place, particularly with manga. It's actually making the sound of something. And like, for example, if I hit my head, I go pat, pat. Okay, like 
okay, so that you know how to say pat pat in English, okay, but it's it's no big deal. I mean, okay, fine. Um, but they have like for Japanese, they have sounds for all kinds of things you never really think about. So I'm like, all right, um, this is a useful book just to be able to read it all. Then these are just examples. So again, uh, uh, intermediary, a basic and intermediary book in Japanese, plus the Power Japanese series will get you really far in Japanese. Thanks for that, bro. Um, shout out to Sean Camp for the $10 super chat. Much appreciated, uh, Sean Camp. Thank you, bro. So next question for you now, moving it back to Brazil, uh, Vio, is um, have you noticed any jealousy uh, against black mm. men? Specifically, mm. you know, uh, black American men and black UK men, even Brazilian black men because of how much women give us attention. Speak on that, Vio. Well, some people would look, but it wasn't, I never cared. And, uh, you know, it was look, look a little bit. I was like, I don't care. I never did. Um, but when I was with that guy, he never cared either. It was just, it, it didn't. Yeah, some, some people give a look. Um, I would say you don't want to go into, like, the slum neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. That's where you start getting a problem. So you want to stay away from them because you might have a problem in those areas. Um, you don't want to go to a poor area. Um, okay. Yeah, stay away. You kind of, one way you say touristy and high level, that's where you usually want to function. Um, and then Santos more or less it kind of has a more intimate feel in terms of a beach so that's some place i would go to as well um and they're not it ultimately I mean, somebody might look at you but not that much I mean, the, the women are looking at you that's what you're going to pay attention to the women looking at you damn all right thanks for that feel um Phil, can you speak on um body counts amongst brazilian women is it very high uh, can you, or can you find women that have low body counts or are even virgins? Because I know Brazil is a very, uh, let's say, sexual society, dancing, mm -hmm. salsa. Uh, me personally, I want a woman with, with a very low body count or no body count at all, a virgin. And I'm sure brothers want that in the chat too. We don't want the high body counts that we see in Western women. That's disgusting in my opinion. Speak on that, Theo. In Rio, you can have a higher body count. That's uh, not my, my personal opinion. Um, San Paulo, you have a lower body count. If you go out to the countryside, um, you're going to definitely get lower body counts. But then you're out of the protection of, of the city environment. So if you speak Portuguese, you can survive out there. Um, I have a few friends who married virgins in, in Brazil. But they were in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, okay, um, speak about these other places in Brazil that are not the cities or are cities, but women there are like very um, humble, low body count virgins. Because like in Japan, we know that Tokyo, Osaka, all the big cities, all the girls there uh, have been run through. They're dead for the streets. <laughs> uh, they're for the streets. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say that the women are there are totally for the streets in Tokyo. <laughs> I, I would uh, I mean, you could no. actually find good ones. My my view about Tokyo was you wanna you wanna get a country girl yeah. who's who who came there, okay? So that's kind of the same way you wanna wanna do with like San Paulo. You wanna get a country girl or you want a girl who's like like half Brazilian, like half Brazilian and half something else. She's more likely gonna have a low body count as well. Um but if you get one who's like college educated and liberal and she's like talking about her career, she's going to have a high body count. Yeah. Damn, so yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to want to go with that. But if you're just like on the beach and you're talking to a girl who's talking about her family and just, you know, you can kind of feel it with her, you know, start talking with her and you can see, see what the situation is. Um, but particularly in, in, as you go into the interior. So I would say like, 50 miles into like 50 miles into the interior from like say San or Rio or San Paulo, this is where you start getting into some real traditional areas. Um, and that's where, again, w women who really haven't been with guys, they're out there. Okay, bro, this is fantastic. So, Theo, tell us the equivalent, tell us the places in Brazil 
right? Name them that are the equivalent of Niigata, Aomori, and all these other places in Japan where you can meet respectable women. Uh, there must be the equivalent of that in Brazil. And what are those places that so brothers can actually frequent to meet those kind of countryside Brazilian women? Because so when it's of you, these city girls, they're for the streets. I would say Rio is for the streets. I mean, somebody mm -hmm. might disagree with me for that, but that was my view. I mean, I was looking at women, I was like, yeah, you've been riding it a bit, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this isn't, like, you're just looking at a fresh crop. I would say, like, this, again, somebody in the chat might disagree with this. My, my personal opinion, it's like real women were more like New York or Okinawa. You know, that's just my, you know, London, you know. Yeah. Like, like they, they, they've been around. Yeah, I mean, you might get some traditional ones. Sao Paulo is much more family oriented. That this is where I'm really kind of focusing on that. And I, the reason I'm saying this one is because I was again, I was talking to my trainer about it. I was talking with the guy who was just there. Um, that my trainer is from that area. And um, when I was there, I was having pretty much the same kind of vibe about the women there. I was like, <coughs> sorry, these women are much more like the countryside it would be mm. kind of like a combination of like fukuoka and i don't know yokohama together okay it's yeah they they they're beautiful they're kind of classy um they would like to get a get a good relationship and go sexually crazy on you okay um mm. this is this is great intel for you because um Okay, well, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I'm really pro. I'm really pro Sao Paulo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This looks like Sao Paulo is, is gonna be my first destination when I go to Brazil because yeah, uh, I don't want to be dealing with women who have been around because too much risks risks in that. In, in London, it's the same thing here. Women here are just riding the CC all day long, and it's absolutely disgusting. But let's mm -hmm. go on to the next question, um, Theo. So, mm -hmm. Theo. Would you consider, um, actually, no, before that question, um, mm. would you consider Brazilian women to lean liberal or conservative? Me, personally, Con I prefer conservative women. Conservative. Okay. The, the conservative. So they're going to they're gonna want you to pay for everything. Um, they're going to, like, it's kind of like this. They might work, but they're not really expecting to pay that many bills. Um, they're really going to be wanting to just go out and live life and depend on the man. But in exchange for that, it, I don't know if I would say in exchange for that, they would, it'd be kind of like they want to enjoy life with the man and enjoy his leadership and they want to get freaky with the guy. I mean, that would girl. really be my real opinion. Like they're, they're not ones to stray so much. They're not into hypergamy as much. I, I never really felt that with them. And again, I have I have quite a few Brazilian female friends. They're not into hypergamy. They're not they they have their guy and they're happy. They have they want to do that. If they do a hypergamy, they'll end their relationship, then they'll be somebody else. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Theo. Um Nick O says shout out to Nick O for a two dollar Canadian super chat. He says, um, I'm almost certain that I ran into Theo in Tokyo. <laughs> we don't know, bro, but <laughs> unless you have a picture of yourself in a Facebook group, then we'll know. But again, thank you for the $2 super chat, uh, Nico. It's much appreciated. This is great intel so far, Theo. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see, liberals, you find them in Rio, conservative, more towards Sao Paulo. Okay, it's, it's good so far. Um, mm -hmm. Wifeable. Would you consider Brazilian women to be wifeable? Um, speak on that, Theo. Um, like I would say, not only wifeable, but you can't stop but make two kids with them. Ah. I mean, like really enjoyable. Like this is going to be a fun process. Like that. Mm. Like, like this is you're going to sit back and say, yeah, I, yeah, that was good. Yeah, I, I don't know who enjoyed making the kids more, her or me. I that was hard. Like literally, it's they're they're phenomenal. Um they really have that ability to understand their man and to appreciate him and love him and then have fun with life, that enjoyment with life. And it kind of funnels through the relationship. And 
you just feel, I always say that every, everyone that I've been with, it just, you don't care about your worries that day. You're just, it's, it's kind of like they just, your worries disappear and you're, you're transported to another world where things are fun. This yeah. is great. This is great intel, bro. Great yeah. intel. Um, hmm. How, how about we speak about uh, social media? You know, social media is a problem here in the West. Is it a problem there amongst the women in Brazil, brother? Yeah, but not as bad. I mean, they have it, but like, if you were dating a Brazilian and you said, for example, you said, I want you to get rid of all your social media if you're gonna if you're gonna date me, because I don't date women who are have social media. So your Instagram and Facebook need to go away. If she literally likes you, she'd be like, okay. Here's the password. I'll put it out right now. It would be a, a done deal. Hmm. Um, because uh, she probably isn't going to having a big rotation, and she knows the value that she has in you. So if she sees that you're serious. She's more or less likely going to, to go for it. Um, if if you know if you're if she understands you're a player, you know, she's not going to do that. God, she can pretty much see through you. But if she sees your family oriented, yeah, she'll she'll treat you seriously. Fantastic intel on that, Theo. Uh, Theo, what about um, do you recommend any clubs and bars, you know, that were very good for you when you when you were in Brazil, Theo? To tell you the truth, I mean, I was just something I was asking my trainer about as well. Most of the time when I was there, to be honest with you, I was on the beach at night. Like I was mm. having parties on the beach and um, I was just having fun. So that's the way it was. I, it was outside. It wasn't really clubbish. I wouldn't really go into clubs. I, I would, why? Cause it was, it was really hot when I was there. I was there in the summer and um, it was just better to be outside uh, and be out all night long with a, like, with an open bar, you know? That's just the way I did it. I mean, you you really think about the clubs. I was I was thinking like, I was talking to people about that who were just in Brazil. What what were they doing? And they were doing some something very similar. They were always outside in restaurants, or they were uh, in a beach area, and then they were just talking to women out there, and then they would go like more towards the family, or they would go more towards her place, something like that, and that's where they get the freak on. Awesome, bro. Um, next question for you is, hmm, online hmm. dating. Is, is that a, an avenue for brothers to meet women? And if so, can you give us the apps that would be a good thing for us to use to meet Brazilian women? People were using Twitter. Um, that's that's definitely true. I mean, I'm looking at some things right now. You can use an app. So, like, let's say that you're in Sao Paulo, and you, like you're in Jardão. And you go to a club there, which is fine. And you meet someone or, or you meet, go get an app and you say, Hey, I'm going to go to this restaurant. I mean, you can, you can kind of do it. They'll, they'll be like, there's, <coughs> there's Tinder, but I always say like, why do it? It, your, your street game is so much easier on point. Why would you waste the time on an app? That's just my personal point of view. Hmm. Uh, it was so much easier. Just meet people. Um, just go up to him and talk. Maybe I'm just a little more communicative that way, but I was just like, why? Like, just poof, go straight for it. Um, if I'm on the beach, I just go on the beach and start talking to people. That's how I did with that guy all the time. I'm just like, hey, let's just go walk up to women and start talking to them. And it was actually rather successful. Fantastic. And so, uh, Theo, Theo, what about um, uh, STDs and STIs? You know, is that a problem in Brazil? I've heard it is, but speak on that for you. Yeah, it is. It's a problem. Oh, um, gosh. You know, so you you need to make sure that, well, I mean, I wouldn't, if you're in Rio, you should assume that she's not exactly, I mean, that's my personal point. You, you need to be a little bit more cautious. If you're in the countryside, no, nah, you're not going to have to worry about it for the most part. You're going to be, you're going to be okay. Like they're they're not it's not ravaging the countryside, um, because you don't have like really a lot of liberal women out there. Uh, I would say in areas if you're talking to liberal women, um, yeah, you might have a more of a problem about that. 
Um, in San Paulo, I never really was really thinking about it. Mm. Okay, but I wasn't. Nice I wasn't. I wasn't trying to to be scoring all the time either. But um, yeah, I, I really wouldn't say. It. But I would say Rio. That's where you'd, you'd be a little bit more concerned. All right, thanks for that, Phil. Shout out to Keith Ginseng uh, for the two dollars super chat. Thanks for that, bro. I see the Chelsea uh, emblem as well. <laughs> thanks for that, uh, uh, Keith. Much appreciated for the super chat, bro. Um, so, Phil, next question for you is, hmm, um, ooh, um, religion. You know, uh, I know Brazil is a religious country, supposedly. So would you say they're more the women there uh, have more of an affinity for Christians and Catholics, or is or is that not the case? Speak on that. Mm. I had a Muslim friend uh, go there, and he wanted to get a woman to convert to Islam. He totally failed. <laughs> yeah, they the women were not going to do that. So yeah, I would say that Catholicism and Protestantism. Uh, Protestant church that's the church they belong to and, and avoid you know it's like yeah on, on Sunday they're supposed to go to mass or they're supposed to go to church but they don't go sometimes they do sometimes they don't and I wouldn't say it's a really big thing like if that's a, a an emphasis then they might talk to you about religion but no nah, not like it was like 50 years ago or anything like that okay all right thanks mm. for that Theo uh, next question for you is, would you consider Brazilian women to be materialistic? No. Mm, yes. Awesome. Mm, I would say strictly not. I mean, if I use Ukrainian women, they would be much more materialistic than Brazilian. Um, yeah. Uh, if I say American women, oh, my God. What a, what a massive problem that one is. They're not... <laughs> I was just talking about this. I guess I was, I was talking about with my Brazilian trainer because she's about to marry an American and um, this will be our second marriage. And I, I told her, I said today, I said, if you're like, a, you know, as a Brazilian, don't you think that if a man makes $5,000 a month and he's living in the middle of nowhere in America that you're, that you should be happy if, if he's your husband. And she was like, yeah, you know, it's only $60,000 a month. Sorry, $60,000 a year. The, the wife should be happy with that and, and make babies and have a family that that was very you know that was very easy for her to say um they for the most part i i don't really see them as being materialistic at all um yeah of course if you always have class i'm, gonna, I'm looking at a comment right now if, you, if you're already rich then you're gonna want to be with a rich family but that's different not a lot of people are rich in brazil a lot of them are middle class and poor. And so, I mean, honestly, poor. So, I mean, if they're with a guy who, let's say that sixty to $70,000 a year, she's going to be thinking that's a pretty good deal. And so she's going to be like, you know, she's going to be giving you interest and letting you know that she's available. Awesome, bro. Thanks for that intel, Phil. So, Phil, um, I know you, you you said that there's a you prefer to uh, have game so uh, cold approaching mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil, but cold um, approach, yep, cold approach would be the best way. But uh, speak about how brothers should cold approach and what we should say, because you know in America and the UK it's mostly that like you go up to a girl, say you're looking nice, um, and you're free for coffee later on in the day, blah blah blah. But how do you run your cold approach game in Brazil, Phil? That was. Like the the cold approach, it's kind of like Czech. It's kind of like Prague. Um, just go up to them and start talking, but you don't have to be so formal. You can just be like, "Hey, I you know I'm an American. I just got here. Can you uh, show me a good place to you know get a drink, or where should I go for for lunch?" And she'd say, "Oh, I'd go go over to this restaurant or this this place on the beach." And it's like, "Hey, well, why don't you come join me?" Well, I'll, I'll pay for your lunch and uh, we can talk. And nine times out of ten, she'd be like, okay, let's go. Yeah, it, it'd be that easy. You get, you get there, have a drink with her. Uh, she'd at least sit there and giggle. Uh, she expects you to be the man and to mm -hmm. be approaching her. 
Okay. That's a big point. You I mean she you, you you can't be like wussy about her or second guess. You gotta be like, hey, I wanna go talk with you. And if she says no, but she shows you no, probably because she's loyal to her boyfriend, you just say, Okay, fine, you know, that's what you go you go 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 to the next girl. Do the same thing and she's good if she you know, she likes you, she'll she'll definitely be expecting you to keep on talking to her. Okay, bro. Thanks for that feel. Um Hmm. You can also touch them. So okay, while you're talking to them, you can actually make a physical touch and like touch their hair or touch their arm. And oh. they, they look at that as being a part of the process of you trying to seduce them. Wow. It, 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 doing that in the UK and America, these girls will call the police on you. Shout out I to know. Brazil. <laughs> I know. I mean, you, like, like, I like it how one person was just, or we were talking about this on, on a stream or on a YouTube channel. She was like, these other countries are filled with pick me's and they, they make it obvious. They're like, Hey, yeah, pick me. I don't talk to the other girl, pick me. I'm here. Mm. And that's how a lot of them are. Especially if they see that you're confident, they're like, Hey, yeah, I'm here. Let's go talk. Let's go. You know, and you have, a, you might have a little, little food together and have some, a few drinks. And if it doesn't, if it's not a vibe, it doesn't work. She'll just walk away. There's no harm, no foul. And then you can go to the next girl and do the same thing with her. It'll it'll work. Um, uh, you can go up to a Japanese, um, sorry, Brazilian Japanese woman, and just start talking to her about her her background and talk to her about her family history. Like you know, look, your your family came from Japan. Tell me about that. And she'll so she'll, she'll talk start talking to you about that. Don't think it's interesting that you actually understand. For example, San Paulo has the number one uh, amount of women in like the area um, who are Japanese and Brazilian. So she'll be interested in the fact that you actually know about it and that you're actually talking to her about it. So she's more likely to say, "Hey, like let's have some seafood, some Japanese food, talk, have some a few shots of sake, and you know, get to know each other." That's how it is, you know, and it's, it's not that hard of a process. Fantastic intel, Phil. This is great so far. Brothers, please get the likes up if you're enjoying this live stream so far and feel free to send through some super chats to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, so, Phil, um, I want to talk, I think you touched on, um, actually, you really touched on this. So, how to dress, bring, bring a suit, make sure you don't bring too much clothing, make sure you when you're in Brazil, buy a Brazilian clothes, dress, dress like a dress like a Brazilian. But shouldn't we dress like um, different from Brazilians so we can stand out more uh, for the woman? No, it's. I mean, it's 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 beach clothing. Mm. Yeah, like you want something flowing. You want something that. I mean, this is a this is a place where it's good to have some abs. So I mean, if you if you got abs, you can show them. Good. So that means you're not really you're not using Armani or Brioni, right? You're not really thinking about like the gap. You, what you're looking looking at is like a basic shirt that shows your body off, and that's that's where they're gonna look. That that's what they kind of expect that. And so, like if you have a really good body, you can just take your your shirt off entirely. That's why I would say like for Brazil, you really want to have a body fat of like under fifteen percent. Um. So that you can go, like you can show your body a bit more, and you know it's that's just it's kind of open feel that way. It's, that's the way it's always been for me down there when I'm when I'm doing things, especially if I'm, I'm usually on the beach. I admit that. I mean, I'm I'm okay. So I go to the Jardin in um, in São Paulo. I would be there sometimes, you know, talking with people. At, it's a more of a business area. It's, it's upscale, but when I was really having the fun, like having a good time, it was in Santos. And that's, that's the beach area. That's where I had a, all kinds of fun. I was, it just, it was, it was good. So yeah, you want to be in shape. Um, you, if you're on the beach, you're not, you don't need to have upscale clothing. This is why you say like, you want to buy Brazilian clothing. Um, Cause they have a lot of beach wear there. So, I mean, you could buy some, you could like from the UK, you could buy beach weather from like beach clothing from the UK, but it won't be as open. Um, it'll, it, you're going to look like an, you know, yeah, yeah, I just go buy it local. Yeah. So you, you said Santos, Santos is down in Sao Paulo, right? Mm -hmm. The beach area. Okay. 
Thanks for that, Bill. So mm. shout out to uh, Kenpachi Alfonso Maximo with the Avatar Bleach. Uh, so for the four nine nine dollar super chat, he says, "IP love what you're doing, but I don't want to bring a Brazilian back to the states. What's an ideal marriage scenario if you don't want to live in Brazil?" Why Speaking wouldn't you want to bring a Brazilian back? You should bring a Brazilian back. This is this is one nationality where she's going to remain true to herself. So when she's going to come, she'll go back to the United States. She's going to look at liberalism as being idiots. <laughs> like, and I, I, I asked this to more than one Brazilian. I said, you know, like you're here in America. These are Brazilians who are dating American men or married to American men. And said, so like, you're here in America. You know what liberalism here with the women is. You can go crazy. You can, um, date other women. Um, so you could date other men and you can like divorce the guy and take 50% and destroy him if you want to. And she was like, why? I've got a husband. I have a family. I want children. We're trying to make children. Why would I want to leave my husband? That has been the overwhelming feeling, the overwhelming statement from all the Brazilians with whom I've talked to women. Um, they do not want to be American women. They they want the the American husband to be a little bit more Brazilian. That's how it's going. They want her. They want him on her side, not her on the American woman side. They don't really care about that. They know they have better culture, better curves, more beauty than the American woman. So why would she want to downgrade herself? That's how she sees it. Yep, that's that's top notch intel there, Phil. Thank you for that, bro. Um, so Phil, our next question for you is um, what's the ratio of women to men in Brazil, particularly in Rio and Sao Paulo? Is it more women than men? It's 50-50? Mm. Uh overall, I would say the entire country is more women than men. Um yes. maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, maybe look look at the official stats. So somebody in the chat look, goes looks it up and shows that I'm wrong. Hey, then I'm wrong. That's fine. I just saw a lot of women when I was there. That's kind of normal. I'm looking at the women. I'm, I'm a heterosexual <laughs> man. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Look at that one. I wasn't really, I didn't really, the, I didn't, I never considered the men to be a threat. Um, so, but there's a lot of men who are fit there. They would be much, the kind of a fit, much, much more of a threat. But, you know, okay, I'm not as fit as they are, but I have status, money, success. And so I can make a family and the women know that they're like, yeah, I can go out with this other guy. I, I, the family situation might be harder with him. I mean, sure it's in Brazil, <clears throat> but if I date you, the, the American black guy or the English black guy or the black guy, the black foreigner, uh, who's from the West, I'm going to have a better opportunity to have a successful family or, or prosperous situation. So she's much more willing to date you. you you're kind of winning straight out by default on that one. Thanks for that, bro. Um, next question for you is, um, should brothers travel uh, alone to Brazil or in a group? I would say just travel alone and meet up with other um, black men in Brazil and get street game because there's going to be plenty of them. There's like one guy said, he, you go to Brazil, you might want to go back. There are black men who don't go back. They actually went there and said, heck with it, I'm staying. I remember meeting a few of them who are there. <laughs> There are guys who are like, I'm never returning back to the United States. I'll just I'll go there for a certain reason. They come back to Brazil. Um, they they just they they've sworn off American women entirely. Those mm. these are guys I remember usually from liberal cities. Um, they're sick and tired of like like again, Atlanta would be one of them, Baltimore, Detroit. These are guy guys who are just sick and tired of dealing with American women. They're like, Hey, I'm I want a black woman, I want black children, mm. and I, I I I want to live in Brazil, and they're there. They're in these cities. Damn. And actually, goes on to my next question. But before that, Theo, Theo, are you from New York or California? I'm actually from Illinois. Illinois, it's in the middle, like more of the Chicago area. Ah, I see. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah you've got a um, Californian accent, so I just thought uh, <laughs> that's why you hate America so much. Because I, I was, Super I was liberal. in Cali I was in California four years. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, oh. So I, I know what's going on there. So my my most of the Brazilians that I know are from California. Yep, you know California is the devil's playground. 
a lot of evilness and wickedness is going there, going on there in California. <laughs> Evil and wickedness. I, I mean, I so, the capital. That's on, that's the reason why why it's important. What I'm saying is that those women there in, in California, like the Brazilians in California, they can smash guys in seconds if they want to. Like they have real market power, and they don't. They're if they're if she's single, oh yeah, she might date a few guys, but if she's in a relationship, she stays. She is she's not the one to leave, mm. unless he like betrays her. Then then she'll leave. But if she doesn't, I mean, I've seen like Brazilian women, particularly. I'm just talking about Brazilian women in America. This is also in Brazil. But they'll, they'll go out and get the pedicures and the manicures so they look good for their man. They go out and make their hair perfect so they look good for the man. <clears throat> they make sure the man is satisfied. That's the big one. That's one thing I saw all the time. Their husbands, their American men, were, you know, they were walking around with a limp, man. They were happy. And, you know, she knew what to do. Uh, so that's a really big advantage. You were... She was in her. She was very confident in her femininity, and she wanted the guy to uh, feel comfortable and to feel loved and cared for. Um, you wouldn't get that from an American woman. She'd think, "No way, that's oh no, that's oppressive." But you know, give me all your money. I I never have had these uh, like Brazilian women talk like like give me a Chanel bag or I deserve a car like a like a, an Audi A6 or an A8. Not nothing like that. They don't do that. They're much more like, "Hey, let's let's have go out and have a good time." Um, if you marry me, how about you knock me up? That's how it is. Wow, crazy, crazy intel. So it goes on to my next question for you: Is Brazil uh, safe for black people, especially black men? I'm talking mm-hmm. Rio and Sao Paulo and other cities because if we're foreigners coming in with our money, American dollars, pounds, is it still safe for brothers like us? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can use your debit card, um, your credit card, your debit card. And it's kind of the same way, like you, how you do shopping in, in the UK or in the United States. Um, I check the neighborhoods, um, ask for local knowledge about which neighborhoods you should go to. If you're staying in an upscale place like I usually do, then you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. If you go to a more authentic place, like authentic, which is less upscale and more like say like upper upper lower class lower middle class brazilian then you might start having some issues so you need to ask about that first before you go there um there's plenty of places to which to travel in the interior of brazil like vacation spots i don't remember them all um, but i've heard a lot of my friends going there and they're having a blast um i never did that personally i always stayed on on the coast but the in in the interior, it's really good. You know what can I say? My my, my most my my dating was in um, San Paulo, uh, um, again the Santos Beach. That's that's where I was getting my freak on. Thanks for that, Theo. Um, brothers, that's enough questions for me. I'm going to open up the phone lines for mm-hmm. people to ask Theo questions. But before I do that, Theo, do you want to add anything else that I've missed out that you want to speak on, Theo? Um, again. Don't think about formal clothing there. The place is hot. It's muggy and hot. It's hot. So, I mean, people are talking about, like, a suit. Well, you could, their suits could be filled with sweat. Like, why would you Why would you wear, wear a suit all the time? You, I mean, are you going to go to an air-conditioned area? Because it's hot. Um, you can, but you have to think about, it, like, do you want your, your, your um, um, do you want your suit to stink? Um, uh, the touristy area is Rio. I mean, sure, it's fun, but my my point with Rio is that you, it's much more difficult to make a personal connection. Um, it's great. I mean, if you want to go party and not really think about meeting someone, go to Rio. Yeah, that that'll work out. If you want to bring someone home and have a ring on her finger, go to Sao Paulo. Um, and lastly, guys were talking. I don't know how many guys have talked about like they want a Japanese girl with booty. Or a Blasian. Okay, well, don't go to Japan for that. Go to Brazil. Go to Sao Paulo. Mm. That's where you get it. Um, you might you might luck out and get a community or like get women like that in the Kawasaki area or the 
like the factory areas in Japan, but you have to go look for that. And then there's a lot of guys who want to shag that in, in Japan, right? Whereas you've got quite a number of these women in Sao Paulo. So you got more, much more of a market advantage. Like you, you can actually date them. Um, you can meet them much more often. So that's where I would go. If you really want a woman with a booty, we'll get her half Japanese, half Brazilian. She's going to have some booty. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> hey, brothers, you, I know you love your Japanese women, brothers. So Brazil should be on your list, brothers, particularly Sao Paulo. All right, brothers, open up the phone lines. Actually, no, hold up real quick, real quick, real quick. Let me mm. do my usual remove message. So, brothers, again, if you're not part of the Facebook group, join the Facebook group, okay? The Facebook group is where you'll find Theo and other high-value men dropping intel. So there's a Facebook group. We've got over 130 people watching. Join the Facebook group if you're not part of it already. Uh, make sure you have your AVI of yourself in the Facebook group so I know you're not a troll. If you're new to this stream, if you're new to my channel through this stream, hit the subscribe button right now and press the notification bell so you never miss a post, an upload, or a live stream from me. Hit that subscribe button. Welcome aboard to the International Passport Movement. Um, again, I am also on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter and send me a DM on Twitter. Um, I speak to Theo quite often through Twitter, so mm. he can confirm that I get back to people very quickly. Um, I speak to my mm. to my followers and my subscribers. So brothers, follow me on Twitter and send me a DM on there if you have any questions. Last but not least, brothers, again, follow me on Instagram. That's another, uh, what the flip? That's another avenue for you brothers to get in touch with me. So brothers, here's my Instagram brothers. Follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. I will get back to you as soon as possible. The Discord server is coming very soon. Still working on it. Brothers, you, you, you're all going to love it. So give me more time for the Discord server. And last but not least, brothers, um, the Cash App, PayPal is also coming. I know brothers have been asking me for that international. Where is that? I want to support you. It's coming very soon. And the one-to-one -one, uh, consultation lessons, the, the consultation meetings, uh, that's coming very soon, brothers. I'm still setting it up. So, brothers, give me more time. Discord, Cash App, PayPal, one-to-one -one consultations are coming very soon. Uh, fantastic. So, let me bring in Anthony Thomas, but let me just add in uh, the, the StreamYard uh, calling link. Call in, brothers, and let's get this classic uh, conversation popping within this classic live stream. So, call in, brothers, right now. Uh, let me pin this to the um, uh, live stream. I see you, Anthony. Don't go away, brother. I see you, bro. Uh, get the likes up, brothers. Send through some more super chats if you are enjoying this live stream. Your support is greatly appreciated. Anthony Thomas, what is up, brother? What's up? What's going What's on? Up? What's hey. up, Theo? <laughs> hey, Anthony. What's up, Anthony? Yeah, man. <laughs> I, uh, so I just wanted to add on top of what Theo is saying. I went to Brazil back in 2016, but my research goes back to 2007. Mm. So I know a lot about Brazil, so I could just go over some of the things I've done. Uh, let's see. I've been to Sao Paulo. I stayed uh, in the Jardins, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, around uh, Via Magdalena. Mm -hmm. and. Man, what's that? I'm trying to think of that that area. It's like a sort of bohemian sort of area, and I can't remember what it's called right now. But I don't remember. I don't remember it either. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. I just, I just thought of it as I just thought of it as Jardin. That's that was right. it. I mean, I, right. That was, that's where all the high rises are. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's the high rises, the banking district. Yeah. That's 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 Jardin's basically. The all the museums are and all that kind of stuff. I was just yeah, looking uh, at the women, so I, I don't really get that much into like what area I'm into. I'm I'm, I'm my focus on you know. Yeah, women. yeah. I like I said, I've I've driven I've, driv I've driven around Sao Paulo and stuff. I mean, the girl I was talking to, we were we were driving her little Fiat Chico Chico around town and stuff. So I mean, mm -hmm. I've been in the middle of a. Uh, 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 go go home traffic in, in in Brazil reminds me of Los Angeles. So mm, yeah, 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 yeah. It can be pretty bad. Yeah, yeah it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I but yeah, to stay I mean, away. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, 
that's not a big deal. But yeah, yeah, I, I was just gonna say. I mean, like I said, the the, the Brazilian people are very hospitable. I mean, that's yeah. probably an understatement. But I mean, they'll they'll invite you into their homes. They'll they'll mm -hmm. entertain you. They'll feed you. That's not an issue. Uh, you know, I mm -hmm. went to a uh, baby shower actually. Uh, the the girl I was talking to, she invited me to her friend's baby shower, and she was a uh, light skinned Afro Brazilian woman married to, I guess you could say, a white Brazilian guy. But um, he knew English. Um, so he, we spoke a lot and, um, I mean, I got to meet grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. and, you know, aunts and uncles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them didn't speak English. I hardly speak any Portuguese, but, but, it, but it was kind of a little awkward, but other than that, we all, uh, you know, smiled at each other and, uh, they understood a little bit of English and stuff. And grandma was especially nice and she was smiling all the time. And, you know, uh, do you have any questions? Know, that's for... it. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's no questions for. Uh, Theo Anthony? No, not really. Like I said, most of what he said, I agree with. Um, if you're looking for a more conservative women, I, I said in the chat, you probably want to look at the interior of the country, like Belo yeah. Horizonte. It's like the sixth largest city. Uh, and, uh, you know, to the rural areas, the breadbasket of the country and stuff. And so uh, things like, uh, you know, religion and stuff are a lot more important there. You also might want to look at Basarela, uh, which is the capital of the country now. So uh, I used to be Sao Paulo back in the day, but um, they've they moved it all to Basarela. So um, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's so many places. There's Curitiba, there's Fortaleza, there's Porto Alegre. <laughs> it goes on and on and on and on and on. It would take you a very long time to see maybe half the country. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. The country is huge. There's a lot of good places to which to go. I just think, uh, kind of find out, check the area first before you go. Just make sure you like you know like where your hotel is, where the police stations are, things like that. Um, where the poor areas are and make sure you avoid them. But for the most part, you're, you're exactly right. Um, especially like my Brazilian friends here in America, also in Japan, uh, they would actually invite me over. Yeah, that'd be very normal. It's just, it was no, it's a very like open society, hospitable. Um, they want to know you, they want to talk. Yeah. And this is why I say the street game, the old cold approach is so much more effective there. I don't know why I would use an app when I can just start talking to people. Mm. Yeah, um, no, I just want I, I, I wanted to kind of address that a little, a little bit. It's it it's it just depends on your like you said your who you are, your personality. Mm -hmm. Maybe you agree more with cold approaching. It does work. It's very effective. I mean, the girls will approach you, <laughs> or they'll give you yeah. a hard stare. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they have no problem if you're in a nightclub and they see you across the room. They'll give you a hard stare. Uh, you know, that um, look. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I've seen a, a friend of mine. Um, a friend of mine I was with at one of the clubs, uh, <laughs> he saw this girl, they started talking, maybe about five, 10 minutes after talking, they started dancing and then they were like making out on the dance floor. That yeah. is not unusual at all. At all. Yeah. Like, so like, I remember just being like, getting like a glass, like that bottle of wine and just sitting like next to the fire on the beach. And just sitting there talking with her, and then eventually making out with her. Oh yeah, and Not, it like wasn't said, very common. <laughs> it was very common. It wasn't any big deal. It was like a very romantic, and I never thought it was a, of, of an issue. Whereas, you know, in America, you used to do something like that. You you're behind bars, and you know, unless you're Chad and Tyrone, but you right. know, it, it, there it's just like it's kind of easy to do. It, I would say like uh, another place that kind of easy to do that is also Japan, but it takes a little bit more time. Whereas mm -hmm. Brazilians, they go right into it. I mean, they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's, let's do this. I, like, like you said, I don't understand why even people bother even going back to the States. I mean, I'll, I'll, I only <laughs> went back because I had to take care of my parents and stuff. And I mean, my mom <laughs> passed away in uh, 2018 and stuff. So uh, oh, my you know, condolences. But, yeah, I, I, it's, it's cool, man. I'm just ta I'm taking care of their last effects here, their last parts of their estate. Um, so uh, you know, it's 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 coming to an end. So it's been a, it's been a long process, but yeah, yeah. 
Uh, like and um, as I said in the chat, I'm I'm probably going to go back down to Brazil for about ten days, um, around mm -hmm. the second or third of the of September. And I love Sao Paulo. I'm going to go back to Sao Paulo. I'm not going to pull around with I'm, anything else. From <laughs> I'm planning. I'm planning two months in Sao Paulo. Are you? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go back and because I, I want to learn Portuguese. I mean, I was in a restaurant. Uh, no, excuse me. I was in a store and I was buying some stuff, and then uh, I was. Uh, sort of communicating with the checkout lady and she sort of knew I didn't know Portuguese and, you know, didn't have any difficulty. I've, I've been shopping a, a dozen times or more, <laughs> but, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I slide my card in everything and I pay for it. And then this guy came up behind me. And he's all, Hey, are you American? And I'm like, yeah. And, and he started talking to me in English. He's all, yeah, I work at a, at a, for Delta airlines. And he said, and I'm going to tell all you brothers the same thing that he told me. Learn Portuguese. Yeah. The whole damn thing will open up for you if you know Portuguese. Yeah, yeah the that's, whole thing. <laughs> that's what I I would really say. The same thing with Japanese. So I mean, if you have the women who speak in English, there's one level that you can do. And again, I was speaking in French, but this is where I'm just trying to get by. But I was well aware that if I could, like, if I have the, the Portuguese from the books that I'm I have right now. And if I were serious about it, the kind of women I could have gotten in Brazil would have been amazing. Oh, like oh, yeah. like and, straight and, out, like oh, oh, that the booty. I mean, the, the booty man again. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, I was yeah. saying that the the risk That's of feminism now nah, because they still have the booty contest or who's got the best booty contest. They, that's that's like a national event. It's on TV. You can watch it on YouTube. There's uh, other versions. I think going back to like up to like twenty, maybe nineteen, maybe. <laughs> but but bro, they still have that contest. Yeah. It's, sorry, it's bro. Insane. I need to uh, let me bring in my black comics, bro. But you, you're dropping a lot of intel, bro. I'll come back to you. one, okay, Anthony. No problem. Uh, no, thanks, bro. Put yourself on mute, brother. Uh, let me bring in uh, Marvel Life Comics. What's up, uh, Marvel Life Comics? How you doing, bro? Yo, what's up, man? How's it going? What's up, Theo? I'm going well. How you doing? Doing well. Been a long time, man. A long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask, um, I missed it earlier, the language, those books, which, in order, which one would you recommend for like a first-timer to start off in? Because I'm intermediate level Spanish. And so what I have, what I have uh, noticed, that I can kind of read Portuguese a little bit, but I can't speak it. What the like what I can't speak it at all. So I'm basically okay. starting at the beginning level for uh, Portuguese. So how old are you? Twenty six. Okay. Do you have any plan on going to port and going to Brazil? Yeah, December, January. Okay, so you're actually kind of active about it. Okay, so um, living language. Mm -hmm. This one has a very good set of CDs instead of here. Instead of here, and um, you can put that on a computer. Right, do I have here's audio park, and uh, you can definitely learn it. Um, and I recommend if you're going to go that soon, you know, think of all the CDs, right, and the levels. If you're going to go that soon, I recommend that uh, you study, um, like, listen to the language at least two hours a day even if you don't comprehend. And then you also study um, the written word and try, like, you know, try to learn the grammar at least another two hours a day. And if you do that, you'll be much more effective to actually communicate when you get there. You need mm -hmm. to have a structure in place in your head to actually learn the language to actually communicate. This is really key. I've, I've learned language, again, I've, I'm fluent in four languages. And so when I declare that I'm gonna learn a language, I'm really hardcore in it and, and go for it. I don't I don't do it half ass. Oh, mm. sorry, IP. Oh well, you caught me there. Um, mm. So uh, I really go all in and make sure that I learn it and memorize it and do that process whereby you you learn you forget the vocabulary three times. It's the fourth and the fifth time that you actually pick it up. And so you have to have that tolerance and to keep on learning it again and again and again. Um, if you're devoted and you actually do it, okay, you've got it. Um, but if you don't really put the time into it, well, you're up, you'll be at the mercy of the natives when you go there. Right, because I'm, I'm still learning Spanish. I've been doing it for about uh, 
a little over a year now. So I can I can have I can have conversations with people. It depends on what depends on which dialect I'm talking to. Maybe like I, it's hard for me to understand Dominicans and Cubans because mm-hmm. uh, of how they speak. But uh, anybody else, I can I can communicate pretty well. But I just decided to, to take up Portuguese as well. So in Spanish, to what degree are you listening to the language? Music every day. You know, music. Okay, well, that's something. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a that's an input. Um, you want to get as much as you can um, formal, like living language. You want to get that kind of formal um, instruction uh, so that you can more or less understand to what degree you're missing the language. Right. And, you know, that, that'll definitely help you. So living language um, in for, for Spanish, I would say go ahead and go for it. Um, but you have to, you have to be devoted. You, you have to put time in or else, eh. well, I mean, it's cute, but it, it won't work. Right. Thanks. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Appreciate right. you, IP. Uh, uh, thanks, Theo. Yep. No problem, Marvel Live Comics. Uh, brothers, feel free to send through Super Chats if you are enjoying the live stream so far. And please don't forget to hit the like button. That'd be much appreciated. Um, do you have any more callers? If not, we can end the stream early. I don't want to take Phil's time too much. I'm also have to go up early in the morning as well in the UK side. I've got some commitments to do in the morning. So it won't be a long stream. So brothers, feel free to call in within the next five, 10 minutes. Um, but Phil, uh, back to you, Phil. So mm-hmm. what else do you want to speak about, Phil? Um, I would say like the most beautiful black women that I ever dated in the world were from Brazil and they were um, amazing. They're again, like full on feminine. And it was from there that you recognize something is wrong in the U S uh, people were commenting that the Brazilians in Atlanta act in a certain way. That's Atlanta. Get away from Atlanta. Why would you even consider about women in Atlanta? It's a cesspool. <laughs> like, please. Don't be don't be thinking about Atlanta like that. Get out of there. Um, I wouldn't date Japanese women from Atlanta. Okay, I wouldn't date Ukrainian women from Atlanta because it's cesspool. So just don't even do that. Um, you'll have a great time. People are asking, for example, you can call. People should call in. You know, Japanese or Brazilian. Well, why not do Japanese Brazilian? You get you you've got this awesome combo that will. Like you, you pretty much can't stop yourself. I mean, it's I, 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 yeah, that's that's what my target demographic is going to be. It's going to be in Sao Paulo, like, um, Japanese Brazilians. That's just the way it's going to go. Um, why it would be anyone else, I don't know. Um, but the Japanese, like, say, Brazilian women are intensely feminine, intensely, um, optimistic, wonderful, open women who know how to take care of a family and know how to make things happen. And um, the difference is, look, it's like kind of like Thai and Filipinas. I tend to want to date darker um, for Thai and Filipinas. It's the same way with Brazilians. I tend to want to date darker Brazilians. They tend to be hotter. So just my preference. What can I say? Crazy. Not uh, preference accepted indeed. Um, Feminine black women check, Japanese Brazilian women check. We love to see that. We, we love those kind of women, you know. And again, this is evidence for sisters who are saying that passport brothers only care about uh, non-black women, blah, blah, blah. They're running away from black women. No, we no. just told you that the type of black women that we want, feminine. It, that's what's missing in the West. You know, If you don't have those attributes, right, we're going to go out mm. there and find it. And luckily, we find that in Colombia, we we'll find it in Brazil. Heck, we we'll even find that in Japan. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's crazy. I, I'm looking forward to meeting. Um, what's it called? Uh, half black, um, half Japanese woman. Because, oh yeah, speak on that, Phil. So you said so. When you say a Brazilian Japanese, I'm going to assume you mean half white, half Brazilian. But what about half black? Brazilian half Japanese woman. No, the when I when I the ones that I saw, I mean sure there were like white Brazilian, half white Brazilian, half Japanese, but the ones that I was really attracted to were the like half Jap like half black Brazilian, half Japanese. 
those mm. are the ones who are like, damn, damn. look at that. Like, oh. you know, like, yeah, hey, hey, I'm a, like, you're available at seven. How about you are available at seven? We're going <laughs> out. Uh, yeah, those, those women are hot. I just want to say, like, they are stunning. And so that's why I would say, like, you, you've got this dark Brazilian women who are, are you know, you know, mixed in with Japanese. You really can't go wrong. Uh, their hair is amazing. I mean, it's just, a, you get this, that Japanese hair. You got, you know, some of the Japanese eyes, but you got the curves of a, of a black woman. It's, man, I, I remember seeing some of those there. I was like, oh my goodness. And they have this just really inviting personality and they're kind of curious about the guy. It's like a playful, youthful playfulness. And they're not trying to be exerting or using power of the guy. They actually just want him to talk to you. They want you to talk to her. And so that's this is where you can be a man. Like It's straight out. Like It's yours to lose. That's what I would say. The, the girl is yours to lose. Same thing for Tokyo. The girl is yours to lose. It's a free shot. Go for it. Fantastic intel. Uh, shout out to Anthony Thomas for the $10 super chat. Thank you again, Anthony. Second super chat from Anthony for, for the night. Mm -hmm. He says, thanks, Theo and IP. Uh, thanks to you too, Thomas. Uh, thanks for you too, Anthony, for the super chat. Much appreciated, brother. Um, shout out to Michael Cantave for the $5 super chat. Uh, appreciate you, IP, for setting this up and to Theo for the incredible intel. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, thank you again, Theo. One hour, 40 minutes of pure intel. Um mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's crazy. I think we've run through everything, to be honest, brothers. And I just hope this live stream was that was a uh, helpful towards every brother in this live stream. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I, I'm I'm out of questions, and we've got no more callers coming in. Um, so mm -hmm. I say we can end the stream, Theo, if that's honestly. Yeah, yeah. Coming. I'm gonna say the last part is um, don't overdo it, guys. This is where, like, you really, I have to, when it talks like to Japan, I, I've given, the, again, Ukraine, Czech, and Japan, I've said a lot about how to do game in those environments. You have to be prepared in your preparation. Brazil is almost the opposite. You need to relax. You need to do the, you need to lead with your personality. You need to enjoy life, enjoy culture, and the girl will be much more attracted to you. As long as you're confident, don't be a geezer. Don't be like this wimp mangina. She won't go for you then. But if you're a strong guy who, you know, knows what he wants, she's going to talk with you. And, you know, don't worry about feminism. Throw that away. Be a man. And it's, it's going to work with you. Follow the, th the flow. If she tells you not to do something, don't do it. Um follow what she is saying and if she invites you over to her family go and you know maybe bring something well you know some some alcohol or some food I, I can't really make that recommendation which one to do but ask her what you should bring and she'll tell you and go there and or ask the hotel staff what you should bring and they'll tell you what you should bring um and go there and just relax don't overdo it though that's one of my big thing don't overdo it and don't wear jordans for heaven's sakes Oh my God! Don't wear your Jordans. Something basic, something for the beach, but don't wear Jordans. Thanks for that, Theo. Um, shout out to uh, Ford Farlane for the ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Ford Farlane. Much appreciated, brother. He says I'm out here in the Harrison, Ironwood, Newark, New Jersey area. Most of my neighbors are Brazilian. Listen to this gentleman. He speak. He speaks the truth. Uh, Ford Farling, please call in, bro. I want to hear how the Brazilian women are treating you there in that area. Uh, Theo, what's so bad about Jordans? Is is that <laughs> so? Do, do do Brazilian women see it and be like, uh, it's, it's too. It's mm. tacky. It's obvious that you're an American. It's obvious you don't belong there. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Like, why would you do that? Mm. Don't do that. I mean, I this would be a, a what, if I when I go there because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go there. Um, I'm going to bring like a nice pair of sandals, um, maybe like Alan Edmund, something like that. 
nice pair of leather sandals, something open. Um, I'll only bring like one, uh, one classy shoe. Whereas I'm going to Ukraine, I'm bringing four or five. Um, I'm bringing one suit. Uh, for the most part, I am going to buy most of my clothes there uh, when I when I land because I'm it's going to be something local and that is breezy, that will breeze through because it's, it's it's going to be hot. I'm going to go there in the summer, um, and then I'm going to go there and relax. That's the best way. But go through the culture, and if you speak the language, this is the big thing. Like again, I, I speak a Japanese, so I can. That's one game plan that I have. If I've got my Portuguese down a bit more. Then I can go into what I'm going to go into is the the, the Japanese areas where the Japanese restaurants and get information um, where where to go where the where the women are at and um, like if, if I can talk to like restaurant owners and they would say like oh yeah I know this one girl or then there's one woman who I'm looking for a guy and I can just make that kind of clear that I'm looking then I can get in the pointed in the right direction and then i can invite someone over uh someplace and to the beach or to a bar and see if she's more or less willing to go it's good to have somebody local that you know and just say hey look i'm looking i'm looking for a girlfriend i'm looking to, to meet someone and they might actually introduce you to someone um that's how my friend did it who just went to brazil and over the, the summer he just tapped on talking to people he says like i'm looking for a girlfriend and they're like, hey, well, what about this guy? What? Sorry, what about this girl? What about this girl? And it was pretty easy. It, it's he didn't have to work that much. He got hooked up. So Phil, um, I know you mentioned about Brazilian women, but I think you missed out about other groups of women that are foreign, like Italian, Russian women, Spanish women. Um, can you can you speak on other demographics of women there in Brazil mm -hmm. that are not Brazilian, and are they checking for brothers as well? What I saw were a lot of Western women, I mean, guys in the chat, go ahead and comment on this one, let's see confirmation. This is my personal feeling, particularly in Rio, I saw Western liberal women who were looking to get smashed by Pablo, like get <laughs> smashed by the local Brazilian guy. And it was kind of like, like Eat, Love, Pray, that movie, I think that's what it was, like that woman who went had a divorce, destroyed her family, destroyed that the man who actually loved her, went to um, Brazil and, and met a Brazilian and had like crazy sex with, with him 12 years and then he left her. But that's what they're kind of looking for that kind of feeling. Um, they're looking like a hookup. I didn't even consider Western women when I was there. I was like, okay. I saw Russian women, Ukrainian women there, but I'm, they were all looking for Pablo. You know, they were looking for that Brazilian guy. I was like, okay, go for it. You know, I'm not gonna get in the way of. We got dark skinned Brazilian women there. Let's go for that. Mm. Yep. Um, shout out to the great pre order for the five dollar super chat. Uh, thank you, the great pre order. Much appreciated, brother. He says, Is Sao Paulo and Rio large populated cities like New York? Is Sao Paulo smaller, easier to navigate? Thank you, Theo, and the legend IP. Speak on that, Theo. It's populated, not like New York, but it's populated. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say at New York level, but it is It is populated. Um, it's not, I mean, don't, they're not really industrialized. I mean, they are, they're kind of not, you, you, you know you're going to go to a second world country. Not entirely second world, but yeah, you're going back a few years. Um, so you don't, pay attention to that you pay attention to um the infrastructure the culture things like that but it, it, there are some kind of like like over like too many apartments in certain areas sure um i i just look past it i didn't care fantastic bro um shout to um naeem abdul ayad for the five dollar super chat uh, it is much appreciated, brother. Thank you so much, bro. Um, yes, I think we can end the live stream now. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, so we've got Jay Bones and Ransom McKissick on the line. Okay, let, let's let's uh, speak to these two brothers before sure. we end the live stream. Um, brothers, please get the likes up if you've not liked this video. Subscribe to, to the channel if you've not subscribed to it and you're a new viewer. And of course, feel free to send through a couple more super chats if you are enjoying this live stream. 
So let me bring in Jay Bones first and then bring in Ransom McKissick. What's up, Jay Bones? Hey, IP. How are you, bro? Yes, bro. I'm okay, brother. Long time. We haven't spoken in a minute. You okay, brother? <laughs> yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm still on, I'm still on vacation. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> With your Jewish chick, yeah? Yeah, I'm actually heading back to the hotel. I had to leave her for a second. She's over there doing avocado baths and stuff like that. <laughs> Welcome back, Jay Bones. Um, I hope you've, yeah. you've enjoyed the live stream so far, Jay Bones. And do you have any yeah. questions for Theo? And can you give any intel you know about Brazil as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Theo, man. Um, uh, salute to everybody. I wanted to comment in because I was actually listening on a live stream. You know, the brother, uh, one of the brothers just tech, um, he just sent in a super chat. His name is Ford. And remember, he was he was saying that he's uh he's in Harrison, Newark, New Jersey area, and there's a lot of yeah. Brazilians that live there. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So in 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 Jersey, if you live in in Jersey, there's a there's a Brazilian community in Jersey. It's like Brazilian slash Portuguese, but more Brazilian. It's in a it's in a special place. It's in Newark, New Jersey. It's called the Ironbound section. So it's called the Ironbound section. It's actually. It's actually five. Let me, tell, let me tell you a quick story, IP. It's actually going to blow your mind. The first time I actually ran into Thierry Henry, the soccer player, I ran into yeah. him over there. Yeah, in the Brazilian community. Damn. Yeah. Cause, so there's a um, there's a there's a soccer team called the New York Red Bulls, and they mm -hmm. play they play in Harrison, New Jersey. So when Thierry Henry was playing, you know, back in the day when Thierry Henry was playing soccer here, he used to come. You know, the team used to come to Jersey to play. In Harrison, New Jersey, and they will the the Brazilian community. They throw like festivals and they throw like these little parties there. And I'm telling you, IP, it, it is a different feeling. You will see some of the most beautiful women that you've ever seen in your entire life. Jeez. You you will see some of the most. I remember when I was in college, we used to go over there. That was the first time I ever seen Tierra and read my life, and it, it was it was just immaculate. Like I've never seen women like that before. Mm. I've never ever seen women. They are. It's like IP. It's 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 a different feeling. Like you know, dating, dating these type of women that really like you know they take good care of themselves. Because if you're Brazilian and you're kind of like you know on the overweight side, you're gonna get shamed. Like they mm. shame fat people within their culture. <laughs> you know, to be a yeah to be a fat Brazilian woman is like almost damn near illegal. Like it's illegal for you to be fat over there, but. Yeah, like I, I remember going there. So it's it's a section called in New Jersey. It's called the Ironbound section, and it's like the Portuguese slash Brazilian community. And I'm to IP when they throw parties there, you will see some of the most craziest looking women. Like some of the most beautiful. Like like every every woman you run into, is like a model. Like every mm. single woman that you see looks like she's a ten. You understand what I'm saying? I'm green eyes blue hair i mean not blue hair green eyes red hair black hair silky smooth skin all of them look like they're just bathed in olive oil like it's yeah it's it's something different bro damn thanks for that intel yeah. uh jay bones um shout out to ford uh farland for the ten dollar super chat again thank you bro for the second super chat from you for the night much appreciated ford he says red bull stadium is down the block from my house my wife exactly is Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's what Thierry Henry used to play at. He used to play for the New York Red Bulls. We used to go there back in the day in college. I tell you, I, um, I tell you, I'd be, I, I've seen, that was the first time, like the first time I ever really met Brazilian women. So we were just talking and I got a chance to meet a girl there. She was, um, she was actually going to Rutgers University at the time. And, you know, we started chatting up and I started talking to her just they're just completely different ip brazilian women yeah. are just completely different just they're completely different, different. it's like mm. it, it, it just it, it's i would i would i would go as far to say ip i know you love the spanish chicks and i i mean i know you love the japanese chicks i get it ip but trust me when i tell you brazilian women are pretty much the best they're the best i'm not gonna lie mm. bro. they're the okay. best hmm. everything they're beautiful they're feminine. They can cook. They clean. They're family oriented. And the best thing about it, I, I remember one time, um, I think it was one of the, the live streams, maybe two or three weeks back. And there was a dude in the live chat. He said, um, do Japanese women have Brazilian bodies? And then Theo said, if you want to date, uh, uh, no, uh, he said, do Japanese women have black bodies, black girl bodies? And Theo responded, said, why don't you just go date a black girl then? 
but that's the difference between the Brazilian girls. They're beautiful and they have black, you know, female bodies. Like they're shaped up. They're like glossy. There's, they're just the best. In my opinion, they're the best. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Jay Bones. Appreciate that insult so, so yep. far, Jay Bones. Gotcha, bro. Put yourself on mute, brother. Um, All right, man. Branson McKissick. How you doing? Hi, hi, hi. How have you been? Uh, yeah, not too bad, Ransom. How have you been? It's been a, it's been some time since we did our Australian live stream. Are you okay, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, just uh, finished just finished law school. Just got my final grades. So yeah, get nice. ready. To, yeah, get ready to start studying for the California bar. <laughs> nice, bro. So, yes, you passed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I passed my schoolwork. Now I have to pass the bar. <laughs> Fantastic. But, You're gonna do well, brother. I can tell you're a smart brother, and all the best in your exams. Okay. Hope you okay. smash it. Oh, Find thank you. Place. Thank you. I okay. have a question for Theo, mm -hmm. actually. Okay, uh, for Theo, uh, how do Brazilian women feel about age differences? Like I heard, like uh, in Colombia, I heard like even fifteen to twenty year age differences are considered okay. Um, how do how do they feel about it in Brazil? You, as long as you carry yourself well, you could do a twenty year age difference. But you need you need to carry yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to have confidence. And go further away from the cities. You want to go into the interior. I see. Yeah. Like Brasilia or, or, or Belo Horizonte? Yeah, somewhere around there. Or a girl who is from there, and then she's in the city. You meet such a woman. Um, generally speaking, the more liberal she is, the, the less of an age gap she's going to want. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the more conservative she is, or the more she recognizes her position, the bigger the age gap you're going to get. So, mm -hmm. like, you could still do, you know, 27 to 31. Yeah, but you have to, you have to have your game right. Um, this one I talk mm -hmm. about with, with my trainer quite a bit. So she's 38. Mm -hmm. I've known her since she was 30. Um and we, we talk about, like, if I went to Brazil again, what would I, if I actually did it for real, like, I'm really gunning for a woman, what would my demographic be? I'm 48. And she's like, oh, yeah, you can do 28, 29. It wouldn't be a problem. I see. Hmm. Ransom McKissick, do you have some background noise? I can hear something. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay, that's, well, okay, that's actually, that, that's actually the extent of my questions. But uh, yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, can't wait to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for All right. thanks for that, Ransom. Yeah. Appreciate that, All right. brother. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, brothers, I'm going to end the stream now. Uh, so uh, two hours uh, going straight. Um, I think that's enough time. I know Phil's Phil's got a busy life. Uh, I know that for <laughs> a fact. So we don't want to take his up take up his time too much. Phil, do you have any uh, last words, uh, Phil? Yeah. Again, guys, you want your the best place for you to meet a woman is going to be in the beach areas. So San Paulo, sure, there are people in San Paulo. That's true. But Santos is the beach area. That's where you want to go to if you're doing San Paulo. You want to be in the beach areas. You want to make sure you have a good internet connection, that you're working while you're there, and then stay there and just relax on the beaches and start talking to people. It's very similar to my game in Prague where I would be in the cafe and just relax and start talking to women there. It was one of the e easiest way for me to meet women. Um, you, you have this beach area, you have hundreds and hundreds of women at a time. You can just go there and talk with them and relax and just be like, take two shots of vodka if you want to, or two shots of Malibu, something like that. Just be relaxed and say, hey, you know, I'm going to go enjoy myself. Think about your life. Go out and you'll eventually find a woman who's going to give you a look and take it from there. Awesome. Hey, thanks for that, Theo. Uh, again, thank you for your time, Theo, and the intel you've dropped here, Theo. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is much appreciated, brother. I, I'm, I'm Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much, Theo. Your, mm -hmm. your intelligence on Japan, Czech Republic, and now Brazil is it's all been proven true i've got a brother out there in czech republic he's he had a great time he met good women there so your intel has been great phil and i'm, I'm thankful that you've taken the time out to drop uh, mm -hmm. to do interviews with me phil thank you bro anytime um, hmm, okay so phil um what's next phil 
What, what, what country? What country is next, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably Colombia. But there, there might there might be guys who know a lot more about Colombia than I know. Um, but I was in Colombia. That was the other area where I was considering, like, really doing something. I'm still. I really need Spanish. That's the thing with it. Um, that's just my point of view. You really want to get something amazing. You want, you want your Spanish. You're you're much more. At, you're, you're not in a good position if you only speak English. Um, again, I'm going to be there um, either like, I don't know, January and uh, February, something like that. We can do live streams. We can talk from there. I'll take photos. I'll give you media. We'll, we'll definitely talk, uh, but I'm going to be on the prowl. Well, what, what, uh, what about Singapore? Have you been to Singapore before? Oh, yeah. I've been to, I've been there twice. I know, maybe three, four times. Yeah. Can you give intel? Good intel on Singapore. Oh, sure. Anytime you want. Yeah. No, I could talk. I saw brothers there. I could talk about Singapore. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. We yeah. need that because I, a lot of brothers have asked me about Singapore and I've heard mixed stuff about it. But if you if you have the intel regarding the Singapore feel, mm -hmm. let's, let's set up this live stream ASAP. Okay, bro? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. All right. Thanks for that, Phil. Um, brothers, I, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream. Um, once again, please support this channel by liking, commenting, subscribing and sending super chats uh brothers uh, when i drop this video on my channel um you're right <laughs> bro. no there, there was a fly on the on the brazilian <laughs> book i was like that die die <laughs> um brothers uh please make sure you, you all comment on my videos i want to see over a hundred comments for this brazilian video it's over a hundred people watching i don't get enough comments on my live stream videos i don't know why but comments help to push the algorithm out to other brothers who need this intel. Remember, we're a channel, we're a community that shares intelligence with other brothers who need this intel. So brothers, again, if you're not part of the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. Here's a link to it, brothers. Um, what the f There's a link to it, brothers, the Facebook group. And Twitter as well, brothers, follow me on Twitter. Join the Facebook group, send me a DM on Twitter. I will get in touch with you straight up. Uh, Last but not least, here's my IG. Follow me on IG and send me a, a DM. Uh, here you go, brothers. And also, brothers, uh, Discord server's coming. PayPal's coming. Cash App is coming. And the one-to-one -one consultations are coming. Give me a little bit more time on that, brothers. And brothers, get your passports. Get away from women in the West because oh, this might sound horrible, but majority of them are absolutely disgusting, you know, Slept around a lot. Um, slept around a lot. Um, you know, just horrible, masculine, very promiscuous, extremely promiscuous. Like I was dealing with a chick recently and the story she was telling me, oh my goodness. It's just a shame that I can't travel at the moment because I would not be dealing with any of them. It's just Ooh. disgusting. It's. I think I might. I might go field mode. Field doesn't deal with any American women anymore. He's been. He's been in America since 2015. You said right. 20, 2010, and I refuse to date them. 2010. He's not dated uh, an American woman in 2010. I might do that. Uh, I might do what field does because I'm just sick of it. To be honest, a lot of baggage. They've they've ran through the CC since they were like in mm -hmm. their early teens. I'm disgusted. I really am. It makes me sick thinking about it. Shout out to Conrad Grant for the $5 super chat. Thank you, IP and Theo, for sharing this amazing stream. Uh, shout out to you too, Conrad Grant, for the super chat. Much appreciated, brother. You want to say something, Theo? I mean, that's, look, I, I would, my point with the Western women is that you're spending all this time figuring out why they're so messed up, and you have to get to like a PhD, PhD level in psychology focusing on narcissism in order to deal with the women. And then you go like to Brazil, Ukraine, Japan, and you spend a little time, relatively speaking, you've got a family and you're becoming a father and you're, you're raising a family. And I mean, the, the difference is night and day. It's like, just leave Western women alone. So like, I'm done with you. Sorry. I mean, you can have all the guys you want. I'm not even going to deal with you. That's the best way of dealing with it. it. It really is, bro. It really is because, um, it's just, I just don't know what went wrong, but the way they think, the way they, um, the way they act, the 
the way mm-hmm. they the way they do things. I mean, actually sleeping around and thinking about thinking that's a good thing. It's not a good thing to sleep around. Like on my channel, I make it very clear I'm about relationships. I'm about going out there, meeting a dime foreign girlfriend and a wife. I've, I've never said brothers to just sleep, run through all of them. Please don't bring Western ideals to foreign countries. In the West, a lot of men run through different women and a lot mm-hmm. of women run through different men. I'm telling you, that is the, that kind of actions destroys a society. It makes mm-hmm. it dysfunctional, that, which is why the West is dysfunctional. Both men and both women are the dysfunctional beings. The way mm-hmm. life is, is that you stick with one person or as few people as possible. You know, mm-hmm. you find that dying chick when you're 18, 19, you stay with her for the rest of your life or, or a good chunk of your life. That's how it should be. Because mm-hmm. to be honest with you, brothers, I'm not really about sleeping around. I'm not about sleeping with one girl a day and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. To me, that's disgusting because you don't know mm-hmm. what that person might have. You don't know what STDs or STIs that person might have and you're running through them. Your mm-hmm. health is very important. Health is wealth, which is why I'm pushing out relationships and marriage if possible uh hold on for you. i know you want to say something bro but shout out to thomas demihin for the one pound 79 super chat big up ip and feel foreign women are the future yes indeed bro yes indeed yeah carry on feel so i mean it's the whole thing is how you build a family and how you become a father and it's basically the west what the women want to do is rob families of fathers that's like it's almost their entire mo and mm. so you can't I mean, if you want to have, be a father and be respected and, and be inside your house, you need a woman from another country. That's the way it's running right now. And the women, you know, they, they, the Western women complain about this. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm done. You're the ones filing for divorces. You're the ones who are destroying families. I'm not, it's not the men. And if you look at the divorce rate for men who actually marry abroad, it is extremely much lower than the divorce rate that you have with uh, Western marriages. So that's the way to go. And I, I see all these Western women, especially the ABW here in the States, who cannot handle this. And it's like, we don't care. We're going our own way. Mm-hmm. We're just it. We're done. That's it. Passport is ready. We'll get her her uh, her the fiance visa, marriage visa. Bring her over. Certain countries again, like Brazil, she will remain. I also say Colombia, but maybe some guys disagree with this. But definitely in Brazil, they will remain Brazilian and remain true to you as a husband if you bring her over to the states. Mm. So do it, or you bring her to the UK. But of course, I as I told you, I wouldn't. You should leave the UK. Yeah, I mean, facts. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, shout out to the great pre-order for the five dollars super chat again. Thank you, bro. Theo, did you feel that women in Brazil wanted you just for dollars? Uh, I got that Im- impression in Colombia, but I was, I was in the tourist area. Yeah, you want to avoid the tourist area. This is another reason why I'm saying avoid Rio, um, because that's where you're going to have that kind of much more of a situation. If you go to Sao Paulo or Go go into the countryside if you really want if you're really worried about that, and you get women who are not thinking so much about your your cash flow; they're thinking about you. That's it. It's not not so much more aggressive. So, so where the cash flow, where women are thinking much more about you in terms of cash. That's going to be more of like like Ukraine, Japan. Yeah, the woman's going to want to know more about your cash flow. Brazil, no man, no nah, no, nah, they don't care. You know, as long as you're, they, they know if you're poor, because you, how are you can afford the airplane ticket if you're poor? <laughs> so you, you have to have some means in order to get to Brazil. So therefore you're self-qualified, you're, you're pre-qualified once you're there. You should be okay. All right. Fantastic uh, uh, information feel. And I, I just want to harp on again about Western women, right? Mm-hmm. Um, brothers, uh, I'm, 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 Making it very clear, stop dealing with them. I, I think as from today, I, I'm, I am completely done with them because mm-hmm. dealing with one recently, and it makes me even sick that I even ah, oh, it's just these women out here in the West, they're they're living lives that is very evil 
and wicked, evil and very wicked, you know, and you don't want that in your life. You, you really don't. Make sure you get checked out. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the average Western woman has a lot of bodies. So if you've slept with one, go to a clinic, get yourself checked out, brothers. You know, I, I recommend that for every brother here because mm -hmm. you don't know what women are carrying nowadays. This isn't the 80s or 70s, 60s where, you know, women had to get married, you know, to a husband to get some things to smash. Nowadays, one night stands um, within 30, sec 30 minutes, come to my place, all that nonsense without any sort of conversation as to are you clean, are you clean? Brothers, please get checked out because mm -hmm. I know how these West women are moving now. Mm -hmm. Theo can even speak about Go on, Theo. They're, the body counts are, are atrocious. I mean, the situation is really bad. I think it's stemming from a lot of um, low self-worth desperation. Again, winter is coming. That's what we're all saying right now. And these women are not designed for marriage. They're designed for the streets. And they're, they're talking about leveling up and having this kind of value. And I'm like, you've got to be joking. Like, I'm ignoring you. So are a lot of other guys. The guys who actually are making money and have some, like a Henry level or any kind of value, they're not dealing with you. And the women don't either. They don't get it or they don't accept it or they're living in La La Land or some sort of combination of this. And I'm seeing this all over the place. So I'm the same way. I'm, I'm basically at this point, I'm even against talking with women in the manosphere who shouldn't be there in the first place and only focusing on men again and saying like, hey, look, um, you're not what we want. You don't belong here. Where? Well, yeah, go. Go. I don't recognize your existence. I like that mentality, feel, And it's very important, you know, for brothers to just leave the matrix. Um, there's a lot of filthy women out there in the West. I'm, I'm being serious here, brothers. Filthy, because what I'm hearing from these chicks, body counts, how they're living, what they've been through trauma-wise, I'm just like, this is this is not... I'm out, man. I'm out the game in the West. Mm -hmm. Please, brothers, get your passports. You know, abstain from dealing with Western women. You know, uh, keep yourself safe. Go and get checked out. I mean, like, go and get checked out, because women nowadays extraordinarily promiscuous even more than men so they they don't they don't they're not given any sort of f's anymore you know mm. honestly i i really mean that brothers please uh so keep safe brothers health is wealth and uh yeah Theo, again thank you very much you want to say something lastly no that's good you had a great podcast I had a great time glad I, I definitely enjoyed it um yeah i look forward to working with you again Awesome, awesome feel. I think the Singapore one's next, so but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll set that up in the future. Brothers, thank you very much. Make sure you all comment on, on the video when it drops, and I will see you, brothers, on my next video. Peace out, feel. Peace out, everyone. See you, guys. See you.